Welcome back to Closing Bell on Cheddar News. As the Russia-Ukraine conflict continues to grow, so do the concerns over the impact it could have on the international space community, and more specifically, the International Space Station. It comes after several tweets over the last few weeks from the director of Russia's state space agency, Ross Cosmos, in which he threatened to, quote, destroy Russia's cooperation on the ISS. Here now to discuss is rocket scientist and author of the book Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want, Olympia Lapointe. Olympia, what do you make of these comments from the head of Russia's space agency, essentially threatening to end the cooperation on the ISS? Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be on Cheddar today. Uh, anytime we see anything regarding the Ukraine-Russia war, it can be scary. And I'm here today to tell everyone the truth of the science and the reality of the space programs, and specifically the International Space Station, and how the the multiple countries work together in making sure that the International Space Station as well as space travel across the world actually happens successfully. Now, the Ukraine and Russia war is a terrible thing. The entire world agrees with that. And it's important for us to know that there is going to be impacts within the space travel industry. And when you read these tweets, I would like people to know the process, for example, there are not only the Russia and the United States are part of the International Space Station, but there are 22 other countries that are part of making impact decisions on how the International Space Station operates. And they each have a different function on how to make sure that the International Space Station actually stays in orbit and is successful and safe for the astronauts. Now, these statements are concerning, to say the least. The International Space Station, it currently relies a lot on Russian propulsion systems to maintain its altitude in orbit. Now, what would happen if Russia withdrew those services? Uh, that's actually a great question. Uh, the United States deals with the electronic components of the International Space Station. Russia deals with the navigation as well as the fuel supply. And there's other countries that deal with other aspects. Now, there has been talks amongst the the diplomatic talks, not only between the United States and Russia, but with all the countries on contingency plans. In the science world and in space, there's such thing as contingency plans. What happens if the navigation should fail? What happens if electricity should not operate? What happens if there's not enough fuel supply? So in each of those cases, there are scientific, the scientists above in Russia, in the United States, all across the world who are operating this, look at how to prevent dramatic situations from occurring. We have so many great scientists in the technology, engineering, and mathematics who are working overtime to make sure that people are safe on the International Space Station. So if Russia were to withdraw their particular contribution, it would have to be in the agreement of the other 22 countries as well as the United States in that. For currently right now, Russia is scheduled to be a part of the International Space Station until 2024. And there's talks of the International Space Station going all the way and extending into 2030. So Russia has the option to leave that contract in 2024, and it has that option. But there has to, get, again, be diplomatic talks between the leaders. Now, the International Space Station currently has four NASA astronauts on board. So what has been the agency's response to this threat? Well, there has been no official word from NASA on it, there's been no comment from NASA regarding this. Uh, as to date, as, as we look at this time and date, there uh, is still plans for NASA to work with the Roscosmos Agency to ensure safe flight. Now, currently, uh, there has been, NASA had used the uh, Roscosmos engines and rocket systems to be able to transport astronauts into the International Space Station until recently, 2020. And that's when SpaceX developed their Crew Dragon vehicle. And the Crew Dragon vehicle then brought astronauts from the United States soil to the International Space Station. And there are Russian astronauts who are scheduled to be a part of that as well. So there are still needing to be talks between between NASA, between the Russian Space Agency, and between the leaders to ensure that there's going to be a, uh, a, an agreement 
on how the individuals will still stay safe on the International Space Station, as well as making sure that the astronauts who are currently scheduled for both the United States and Russian flights are either going to continue with that or choose to go on their own respective transportation vehicles. Now, for nearly a decade, Russia's vehicles were the only means of getting astronauts to and from the space station. But in 2020, SpaceX's, Space, SpaceX's crew Dragon capsule began taking astronauts there as well. And there are also tentative agreements in place for Russian cosmonauts to fly with SpaceX in the future. What would be the impact, though, if those agreements fall through? Because we know that Elon Musk has been uh, definitely meeting with Ukrainian leaders. Uh, that's that's a very interesting question. We're going to be all watching together as a world to see how the space industry adapts to conflict. Now, the conflict that is happening on Earth is actually translating itself into the space agreements. Now, currently, SpaceX, is, as well as other programs, have been developing high technology space vehicles. Now, these are vehicles that will get into higher orbit. These are the orbits that are required for our satellite navigation systems, our satellite communications. And it's not its not the commercial flights that we've seen across uh, the, the TV and systems in the last couple of months. It is actually the hardcore type of flights that go into higher atmospheres. So uh, SpaceX has been de developing a higher orbital vehicle. And it is currently in, in 2020, it currently flew the, the Crew Dragon vehicle that was successfully able to launch as well as dock to the International Space Station as well as land successfully. And that is a huge feat for the American uh, launching systems because that means that the United States does not have to recruit uh, space travel on other flights, namely the Russian uh, agency flights. So we're more than likely going to see an increase in uh, two things, in the missile and defense industry, as well as the space industry to ensure that the United States has options to be able to fly to higher orbit, to do things like maintain the satellite systems, to eventually return back to Mars, and to uh, ensure that we still have a strong ability to navigate uh, technology in space. Well, thank you to Olympia LaPointe. She's a rocket scientist and the author of book Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want.